We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For an American, there are few words that are more famous, that are more fundamentally a part of our political DNA, of our heritage. And these words, which are part of the prologue of the Declaration of Independence, that document that was issued by the Second Continental Congress and which declared the 13 colonies of America to be independent of the King of Great Britain, are an immortal part of our political inheritance. They're penned by Thomas Jefferson, one of the great figures of the American founding. And both Jefferson himself, the Declaration of Independence, and indeed, more broadly, the American founding itself, are all a part of the Enlightenment. The ideas contained in the Declaration, equality, natural rights, the pursuit of happiness, belong to the 18th century. They belong to this period that we've been exploring, the age of enlightenment, the age of reason. We've considered how modern political thought has its roots in the ideas of Thomas Hobbes with his state of nature, his social compact, his Leviathan. We've seen how it was given definitive expression by John Locke with his theories of natural rights and the social contract. The 18th century received these ideas of Hobbes and Locke, and during this period they became fundamental. We've explored how in the 18th century, a new kind of materialist philosophy rooted in classical Newtonian mechanics, grounded in Locke's epistemology and Locke's view of government, expressed most importantly in his two treatises of government, become the dominant political culture of 18th century philosophical life. We've explored how in the 18th century, though, there's also an ancient legacy that has its roots back in Aristotle, as well as in the debates between the Stoics and the Epicureans over whether virtue, as the Stoics would say, or pleasure, as the Epicureans would say, were the essence of happiness. And we've explored the ways that for the 18th century, happiness became a central term an essentially contested term, something that's fundamental, that is a part of the universal language of Enlightenment thought, but also something that is fundamentally contested. For by invoking happiness, you were necessarily taking part in some of the most deeply grounded debates of the period. And so the Declaration's claims that men have a natural right to the pursuit of happiness already places the Declaration in the midst of Enlightenment thought. And so over the course of this lesson, we want to consider the political philosophies that are at play in the American founding, in the Declaration of Independence, in the mind of Thomas Jefferson, and also in the constitutional regime that's created in 1787 in Philadelphia. The American founding is part of the Enlightenment. It is part of an intellectual movement that looks back to the best in ancient philosophy, Aristotle and Cicero, the Epicureans and the Stoics, but also transforms them in the modern context of the scientific revolution and the 18th century political world. The American founding, in so many ways, is perched right on the edge of modernity. And over the next several lessons, we'll both try to understand the American founding in its own particular moment in the broad history of law and justice, but we'll also consider the ways in which that moment was a moment of extraordinary change, a moment of change that was so profound and fundamental that people living through it had barely yet begun to understand just how fundamental those changes were. And so we'll look at the American founding as a moment in the history of law and justice that is perched between an ancient legacy that goes back to the political thought of the classical world of Greece and Rome, but also on the edge of modernity and the most fundamental transformations that human society had ever seen.